a little chilly. I got a nice warm jacket, so I don't need to start cranking on the electric heat in here yet. <laughs> it's not that chilly near yet, but wintertime, it's going to be freezing in here. And I haven't got that wood stove set up yet. Anyway, I lost about six or seven hours of time yesterday messing with the computer. Two editing programs, and I'm losing. It really sucks. I hope this is going to work. Um, what is it? It's like, uh, I think it's 10 to 6 in the morning or something on a, s is it Saturday? I think it's Saturday. I'm contemplating if I should go live or not, but probably not. Maybe I'll just keep, I'm going to continue doing this to see if I can hopefully get this second program to work. Without had it all fixed, it's looking like I'm going to have to break down and get another computer or something. That sucks ass. Anyway. Um, it's funny, when it comes to truth, th this dominating topic of this channel, truth, it's funny how many, how common it is. It's a common sentence. It's a common one. With many people. Not one clear photo, no photos at all, not one bit of evidence. What a bunch of BS. Isn't that bizarre how somebody would have the confidence to go public, make that statement, and blow a gasket with absolute confidence? Isn't that weird? Because the same time they say that, um, they're screaming out to the public that they haven't even looked into the topic. Isn't it weird? It's just, it's weird. There's just various different things about the human mind that, that make me, that are, I find interesting frustrating and sad <laughs> you get a you get a bunch of emotions while observing the human mind at work right I find it amazing that some that the a lot of human minds have it in them to belt out scream out with a couple insults usually too that one the one about not a picture not a photo not a clear photo no nothing no evidence it's so weird and then go back wherever they came from in a huff and then you can't reply in any way, because if you reply, you're, you, uh, it's, they take it as you're insulting or attacking them for not believing in Bigfoot. <laughs> but, it's, but it's further from the, from the truth, right? Like I always say to people, hey man, take from what you will leave it, but just don't blow a gasket. You know? It's weird. You go, nope. I am going to blow a gasket, I'm going to call all you, guys, all you people there a bunch of psychopaths. Sometimes I wonder, I've said in the past, sometimes I wonder, with all the, the true garbage going on in our existence, sometimes I wonder if it would be just how much more comfortable it may be between your ears to just fall on, give up thinking for yourself, look the other way, and uh, work towards that, whatever the goal it is that society thinks you need to be working towards. What is it, retirement or something like that? Working towards 65, then you can go do shit? Isn't, isn't that one of the biggest crocks of shit you've ever heard in your life? Man, I'm babbling. It's first thing in the morning. Moving along. Photographs. Um, had a couple photographs sent in. I'm going to show them right now. Now I'm hoping I can figure out how to get this damn thing on this new editing program. That's why I was thinking about going live. Then I thought maybe I'd throw the photograph up on this screen. Uh, it's not going to work out. So it looks like we're going to try recording. Anyway, I'm babbling. Babble, babble, babble. Now. Now, hopefully this is going to work for what I'm about to do, in case I cannot figure out how to get these photos onto the edit program, onto the edited video, alright? And I want to find some other photographs of mine from the past to add into this. What am I doing here? Get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that for sure. And that, and that. We'll hang there for a second. Now, 
Listen to this. This email is titled, this is a recent email, Why No Clear Pictures? I have something for you. Hi Steve, I just seen your video on quote, why no clear pictures end quote, on your How to Hunt YouTube page and thought, I think it's time. Although this picture isn't the greatest, <clears throat> excuse me, although this picture isn't the greatest, I think it's definitely worth sharing. A little bit of background on this picture. It was my second day camping out in Squamish, BC, early October. You probably recognize those mountains. Got there on a Friday afternoon and the picture was taken around 5 p.m. Saturday. And was going to spend another night until I spotted some movement on a hill by my camp. I was sitting by my foldable table and chair under my canopy tent relaxing, sipping on some Jack Daniels. Luckily my phone was on the table. I grabbed it and, and saw this backing up behind a stump. I managed to click one off right from my chair, then it was gone. It had brown hair, like an elk or a deer or a mountain lion, that same color. I turned on my dash cam and set the phone on record, but looking at the footage after, there was nothing. The stump sits on top of a hill, same grade behind it as in front. No, I didn't go check for tracks or go anywhere near there. I had a crossbow for some target shooting, that's all. I grabbed all my shit and got out of there in about 15 minutes with one eye on that stump at all times. Even just driving out of there was stressful as hell. The pictures cropped and had the original. The other pictures I sent you are just around my camp from the previous days. I've heard trees falling in this area a few times and there are elk tracks everywhere. I wish I videotaped, of course, but the picture is better than some blur. I don't know what else to say. Thank for this platform, and sorry for your crazy encounter as well. Please do not share my name as I don't feel ready for that. Okay, I got you, man. Now, let's look at the pictures as I'm looking them together. And that I can do because I think I figured that out. Now, on our pictures, where are we here we go so the first one we're going to look at the first one in the email is this one all right typical camp typical october colors bench fire pet gotcha i'm guessing this is looking i know where that is roughly i think that's looking dead west from my past experience next one Now we are looking at Timbered Hill from his camp. There's his tent canopy. Next one. Now this is where it's interesting, in a way. Now hopefully by the time I get this video up, I can share with you a photograph of Sarah and I. Now I hope you can see my the mouse, the cursor, whatever you want to call it. Now you see right up here, I hope you're seeing that right here. We're looking right there, the edge of that clear cut, right there. All right. So right there is where Sarah and I stood a few years ago with those cliffs in front of us. We had the camera facing our back. Right there. We were standing right there with that as the backdrop. And right where that cursor is, somebody sent in a photograph of me and off beside me, as far as I'm concerned, was this clear being with a face, chest, shoulders, head, the whole nine yards, standing there looking at me. And I have to try to find that photograph because it's right there. And also what is coincidental about this is years back after meeting up with the Squamish chief, for indigenous chief, and he agreed uh, he wanted me to assist them in a wolf cleanup because they were just getting right out of control and all the game was depleting. Anyway, different topic, different story, but at that time, so I was reaching out for bait from farmers, etc. We had about a 700 pound hog. I mean, this thing was a forklift was used to drop the thing in the pickup truck and the truck went dunk. 
So we dropped that off. Where was it? You can't see it in the photograph, but it was dropped off back here in these hills. And a friend of mine went up to go check on it. It was gone. And something picked it up and carried it away. And I had to launch that out of the box of my truck using a toe strap. Put the toe strap around his back legs. Reach on the toe strap around a tree on a steep bank. Put the strap on the ball hitch of my truck and I drove away, which pulled it out of the truck and down the bank with trees. So if someone were to have gone there and decided they needed to pick up that hog, it would have been one hell of a mess of looking at where the truck, whatever they would have had, tow truck would have had to go in there to winch that thing and drag it up the bank. It wasn't a mark. It wasn't a there wasn't a drop of bird crap. There was nothing, no flesh, nothing. That 700 pound hog was basically picked up and disappeared. Then, I think it was a few months later, would have been in the summertime, the next summer, another friend of mine posted on Instagram, they're mountain biking somewhere around right here. They're mountain biking a couple miles away. And he took a picture of a wild boar. He thought it was a wild boar skull two miles away and he, and he found it on the trail and took a picture of it and it was all cleaned up you know from the elements but uh and then i texted him i said where'd you find that and i said can you i go i don't want to know if it was your hunting spot or ever go just text me an exact location where you found that skull and he texted to me and it was about two miles away and i'll tell you what there isn't a wild game predator animal that will carry a skull for two miles they just don't do it. They eat everything right there. They scatter around right there. They leave it there. See ya. Interesting, right? Okay, move along. Next photo. Next photo. All right, there's another photo. Now, that Tricuni Peak. Another coincidental. Where that wildlife biologist filmed that large human-like form down in the glacier. Right there, right up there. Another coincidental, right? Now here's the picture he's talking of, and here's the stump, and here's this, what looks like it may be a face. Now what's interesting about this face is it is basically identical to the one that was looking at me from those trees. Interesting photo. Obviously it could be part of the stump. Now let's get closer in. Oh, it doesn't blow up on my computer. Here we go. Is that working? There we go. Almost looks like it's squinting a bit, but it would have been facing... Okay, let's go back again for a second. That is facing to the north. That's facing north. All right, so if that's facing north, that face is looking into the sun, which would possibly makes sense for it to almost look like it's squinting in a way. Hey, hold on a minute. Oh, she escaped. Uh oh, hold on a minute. All right. Now, let's just say, let's just say this is an unexplainable large being. And if it's one of these beings, if that is the mouth down there, Hard to tell, it's a little distorted, but you know what they say about that rule of the distance between here and the nose compared to the human being, right? Seems to coincide with that one, <laughs> doesn't it? And then obviously the nose and the the, uh, the eyes, the brow ridge, the whole nine yards, it's all there. So there you go, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Now, um... Gee, that's a big head. Um, now, take from it what you will leave it, right? But what I would like to say to the person who emailed this in is, you know what you gotta do now, don't ya? Right? You're gonna have to, uh, well, I don't, I can't say you have to, but I guarantee you there's tens of thousands of human beings right here watching what you shared with them and they're all screaming go back and get somebody to stand there and take a picture from the exact same spot you took the picture right and that'll also show if that image that you caught whether that's a distortion 
on the stump, a piece of the stump, just a fluke, one in a million, everything was rotting and falling together to look like that? Or is it gone? And if it's gone, and there's a human being standing there, just how big was that image? Right? And I know it might be a little nerve-wracking, but if you can, you know, if I was over there right now, I'd hook, I'd hook up with you and I'd go there with you and do that. Who knows, maybe we'll be able to in the next little while, because I have to go away again anyway, but which puts me right through there. But if I had time, I would go there and do that with you. If I made you nervous, I'd go. If not, find a buddy, if you could. If you could, if you live around there. Sounds like you must. Um, go back and take that photo again with somebody standing there. All right? For us, if you would. That'd be really interesting to me anyways, and probably a lot of other people here. So there you go, you guys. There you go. Another one, right? Another one. And I hope I find in time for this video before it hits, I hope I can find the photo of me and that image in the trees looking at me to show you the com and compare. Interesting, right? Now, who else do we got? We got a lot. A lot of recents. What's this one? There's a lot of activity around where this photo was. There's so many sightings. And on the other side of these hills running that way is the highway to Whistler in Pemberton where I lived for many years. And that highway has so many, excuse me, sightings on it. That whole area you're looking at is just nothing but activity sightings of these people. Next one, a lifetime of knowing. Dear Steve, I hope this reaches you, as I am somewhat blind and technologically naive. This will take me ten times longer to write than it will for you to read. I've had two cornea transplants, and I'm still having major eye troubles. I have to use 2.75 glasses and a magnifying glass. Oh man, that sucks. Please forgive any absent punctuation. This is a long one, so I guess I'll start at the beginning but we'll try to keep it short as possible. Believe it or not, this is the first text I've sent in my life. However, I must tell the story to someone. All right, absolutely appreciate you right now. Be on, right off the charts with appreciation right now, okay? I'll start with a little background about me. I grew up hunting and fishing in wilderness survival. At six years old, I had trap lines. I would trade my first I would trade my first for wooden nickels at the trading post in Saladisburg, Pennsylvania. S-A-L-L-A-D-Y-S-B-U-R-G, Pennsylvania. Each wooden nickel is worth an ice cream cone. I spent a lot of time in the wilderness. I guided brown bear hunting on Kodiak, Alaska for eight years. And now hunt the woods in Northern California. No shit. I've been on that hunt. I filmed one there. Incredible country. I come from a military family, somewhat as my father was in the Army when I was born in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. My mother was a teacher. The daughter of a Rear Admiral, James R. Reedy, commander of the whole 7th Fleet in the Navy. He was the first man to circumnavigate Antarctica and dove under the ice for National Geographic. He set up mail routes across the ice from South Africa to New Zealand and Australia. My brother, a former EOD in the Navy attached to SEAL teams, now Pennsylvania State Trooper. My father's brother, who passed two weeks ago, was CIA. At my grandfather's memorial, my uncle told me that I beat to a different drum. I took it as a compliment. I'm what you would call the black sheep of the family. My name is Tate McIntosh. In 1977, my parents separated, and my mother decided to move to Oregon in 79. A little ways after crossing into Oregon from Idaho, my mother woke me up by shaking me. My brother and sister were asleep in the back seat of her old Subaru wagon. I woke to see a bright lava orange light coming through the windshield. My mother yelling at me, Do you see that? Do you see that? I looked up to see a craft above our car approximately 100 feet above us almost directly. 
slightly under the edge of disc shaped craft that covered a four lane highway with 30 yards between the east and west lanes. After watching the craft for three or four minutes, my mother shaking me every 20 seconds to make sure I was seeing what she was seeing, the craft flew off straight down the highway. It left so fast that the light particles were still hanging in our car. Wow. They dissipated in the direction that the craft left. It left so fast that the light particles were still hanging in our car. They dissipated in the direction that the craft left. Right after, four more flew past our windshield at incredible speeds. My mother could identify all conventional fighter craft, having lived on a Navy, on naval bases all around the world. My grandfather was one of National Geographic's top 10 aviators in the history of flight since Kitty Hawk. Feel free to look him up. I digress. Fast forward three years. After the UFO sighting, my mother freaked out. She didn't know how to handle it and started taking us to church three times a week. I was told not to talk about the experience. As we were new to the area and she didn't want people to think we're crazy. So I swept it under the rug for a while anyway. My mother met a man named Wally at church. Wally was 6'6 six, six and 260 pounds, a jolly fellow, part Native American. He was dark skinned and always, and always quite tan. Wally was also a hunter, so he would take me fishing and hunting with him. Two things I really missed doing with my father, who still lived in Pennsylvania. In 1981, Wally took me elk hunting in eastern Oregon. On our way to the hunting camp, we ran into a, a group of loggers standing on the road. None of them so much as turned around as we approached. Wally stopped the car and we went to get out. The first word I heard as I opened the door was Bigfoot. As I got out of the car, I looked up on the hill that the loggers were looking at and saw a large black figure climbing a steep hillside. My eyes were good back then and I saw what was unmistakable to me a large, bipedal, hairy man going up a 50 degree incline very fast. The 10 to 12 loggers that were watching it were second guessing what they were seeing, but most were saying Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Wally quickly grabbed his hunting rifle out of the back of his toe to Celica and scoped in the creature from the stability of the top of the car. After the creature reached the top of the rock face, it made for the tree line which was about 50 yards of clear cut. After it disappeared into the trees, all the loggers turned to Wally and asked, well, what is it? Wally's face came up off the scope and instantly turned ghost white. He mumbled that it wasn't a bear and started to say it was a Bigfoot when he caught himself and said that he wasn't sure what it was. After that, on the way to hunting camp, Wally told me not to talk about it again with the silence. I obeyed his order and did not mention it to the other hunters. The next morning I was up at four, ready to go, ready to get to a vantage point before a first light. Wally procrastinated long enough to wait <laughs> till a first light to move. He was obviously scared shitless. His friends razzed him a bit about this 12 year old kid who's rearing to go and he's just procrastinating. The next morning I got him to move before first light, but upon reaching the mountaintop, he made a fire. I told him that's not a good idea for hunting elk. He was still obviously very shaken from the previous day's experience and thought a fire would help keep us safe. The wind picked up and the fire caught a brush pile on fire. We spent the whole day trying to keep it from starting a forest fire. In short, I've seen a UFO up close and seen a Sasquatch with my own eyes at a very young age. I've had no choice but to think along certain lines of thought since these experiences. Most people go from believing to knowing, and to the hardest part, understanding. I am now in the understanding part, and have had more experience, experiences since this happened. I don't want to take up all your time, but I feel I must tell these stories because I'm not sure how much longer I'll be able to see. Also, 
It is them that brought you to me. The forest people kept bringing your YouTube videos up on my phone. I swiped it off many times thinking it was another hunting video, but it kept reappearing. At the time, I was in the woods in Northern California, an hour north of Nevada City. I was staying at a friend's property, a micro-environment in the mountains of the Tahoe National Forest. I've had several experiences between my first and no, but I will only tell of my latest experiences. Thanks for bearing with me and listening, Steve. Much appreciated. Here it goes. Upon arriving at my friend's property, I could feel an energy that I couldn't explain. Very raw and pure. The first night I spent him I spent in my friend's mother-in-law's trailer. In the late evening I heard sticks hitting the top of the camper. I opened the door and looked up. I was not under a tree or near one, and the wind was not blowing. I just wondered. That's strange. The second night I was sitting in the trailer at the table with my dog, Angus. Angus was on the opposite side of the table on his bed on the seat. He was a pretty big dog, about 108 pounds. Half black lab, half German, short hair. The perfect hunting dog. He had spent his whole life with me in the woods, and I could always tell what was outside or in the area by the way he barked. I could tell if it was a deer, coyote, lion, or bear. As we sat there, he started gr growling in a low, something's out there growl. I asked him what was out there and he started to get up and slowly walk towards the door still growling. I opened the door and said, go get him. He would usually bolt out of the door and start barking at whatever was out there. Instead, he just got to the door, growled a little bit, and then backed up and went back to his bed still growling. All the while the look on his face said it all. There's something out there that he did not want to contend with. The next night they came back and told me telepathically that they knew that I was coming when the trees fell. My friend had just dropped several trees to get more sunlight in his garden the day before. My sister knew that I am in Sa that I am a Sasquatch enthusiast and had sent me a, a little two-dimensional wax figure of a Sasquatch. I put it on top of a light fixture outside the front door of the camper. When I looked again, it was gone. I looked all around, thinking it had fallen or I put it somewhere else. I also noticed that all of Angus's toys were gone. His stuffed animals and his squeaky ball. He was very bummed he had no toys, and we were very far from anywhere. I could replace them easily. I started an offering plot. I started an offering plot about 10 foot by 10 foot, clearing away all debris and raking the plot so that anything that stepped on it would leave a print. I put a bowl of apples in the middle of it, and they would come and take the apples, not leaving any sign. There were no other markings on the freshly raked dirt, no birds, no deer, no bear, but the apples were gone. I then went up to the garden at night without a flashlight, hoping to have an encounter. I asked them to bring back my figurine and my dog's toys. And on the way back to my trailer, I stepped wrong in the shadow of the moonlight and seriously hurt my ankle. This really bummed me out because I was planning to go back up to Truckee, California to go dancing with friends the next night. As I went into the trailer, I asked if they could bring back Angus's toys, my figurine, and if possible, please heal my leg. The next morning, I got up to get out of bed and gingerly went up to my went to put my foot down. Upon putting my weight on it, I discovered that there was no pain. Putting more weight on it, I discovered that it did not hurt at all and was fully healed overnight. Uh-oh, that's the end of the email. I don't think it ended there. All right, hold on. Let me see if I can dig this up in the inbox and see if there might be more there that I didn't copy by accident. Darn it, Tate, I just opened, I just found your email in my inbox and uh, that's where it ends, my man. So, um, I know it's gonna be a pain in the ass. Maybe you can even find somebody, maybe somebody give you a hand and scratch off an email while you, while you verbally dictate it, maybe. But you left us a little hanging there. I got a funny feeling that all the toys are probably returned, right? And if, 
if you would, if you could, I know it takes a long time, maybe get somebody to give you a hand. Or, if you want, if you can figure out, I think you can record your voice and send that maybe. And, or, maybe even give me your contact information in another email. Maybe we do the, the Zoom thing like I did with Nina, which I have to do with some other people. I haven't had, I've been at 10 seconds. Man, I get so behind and shit that I want to get done. But anyways, Tate, appreciate you sending that in, man. And, uh, if you would, if you could, obviously there's some, a lot missing. Um, try to pick up where you left off and send us the rest, all right? I'm, I am definitely interested in hearing all about it. Big time. Now, let's hope, hopefully Tate gets a hold of us and sends, uh, sends us more. Now, where am I? Who's next? Um, oh, this is a real short one. It's titled, Delete Them. <laughs> I'm sure you have a reason for it, but why not delete the emails after you have read them or archived them? Not that I mind, but they may help with duplicate shares. Thanks, Garrett. Okay, Garrett, thanks for that, man. Um, well, here's the deal. The unfortunate part is I, uh, I had like 2,500 emails saved, copied and pasted into my notes from my inbox. So I never thought about anything. I just, and I always, I've learned from my past, especially being in business and contracting, I've never erased an email ever. And, it's, and it, that move has saved me possibly tens of thousands of dollars from some way too rich moron that decided he was going to try to screw me. So just for that fact alone, um, I never erase emails or delete them ever. And um, it was my notes that were wiped and that's why it's confusing now because I have to go back in and sift through and find 2,500 emails in there that I haven't read yet but they're marked as read. Whatever. No big deal. It's not really upsetting your lives too bad though, right? No adventure dogs out there chewing on the elk bone. I picked up my elk meat yesterday from the butcher. These are nasty. I got another pair in my pocket. Bingo. And uh, yeah, I picked up all the meat and saved all the bones and all. They actually cut the bones up this time for me for the dog sized tree. So you hear the noise. That's her chewing on her fresh elk bone out back. This is red. September 19th is the title of this email. Hello Steve. Do not use my name as it is my email. I just happened to come across your YouTube channel about a month ago, thank God. So, sometime between say 25, 2015 and 2020, I had two things happen that I just did not sit right with me. And I forget which one came first. Okay. Once while sleeping in bed with my head bored on the north back wall, I was either half awake or awake at 3 a.m. Not unusual for me. I heard what sounded like a huge whale's tail or big open hand that hit the outside of the wall. Wood shingles. I convinced myself that it was a deer hoof hitting the wall, not yeah, me too. When I heard that, I, I was hoping it was a deer that ran against the, slammed against the house, but it wasn't. Another night around the same time, 3 a.m., with my bedroom window open, must have been a summer season to have my window open, I heard a woman screaming like she was being killed slowly. It was just terrible. I jumped out of bed and ran to my door and opened it to see if there was a car accident or something, but all quiet. So I go back to bed. The next day or two, I asked my neighbor, he hunts deer on those on these mountains. Mountains in Nova Scotia are like hills compared to the Rockies. If anything in the if anything in the woods makes that sound, and I think he said rabbit, but I did not believe him because when I was young and my dad took me rabbit hunting, he said if the rabbit does not die right away, they sound like babies crying. Anyway, I've gone on many hunting trips with my then partners over the years before this and helped get a buck. Bubs, what are you doing? Go chew your bone. 
Sorry. Had a dead coyote strapped to my back and stayed in old hunting camps all by myself for days waiting for my partner to come back from his work week during hunting season and push the hanging dressed deer aside so I could use the outhouse. Anyway, my love of the woods began early in my life as it was safer there than at home. But you're putting the pieces together and so have I. I believe we are energy as well as everything else and yes there are things we do not see in this form time space and mind but i think while in another state in our mind can be terrifying or pleasant i'll tell you one thing that was just terrible that happened 40 years ago i went to bed before my husband and while in while in that in between stage of sleep and awake i've had the dog wolf or whatever canine walk through my bedroom door all in black and made me think of black leather upright on his two back legs and somehow over the top of me and its snout two inches from my face and say there's a lamb among our or the flock anyway had the mind speak my whole life slow down stop etc there is so 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 much more but Years and years later, I was reading a book, Book of Strange, and that saying about the lamb was written, sorry, there's typos, was written in it. And I almost dropped the book. But in that book, it said as well that energy, E in motion equals emotion. Anyway, I say my prayers every night to to my higher power, creator, or Mother Earth, and picture a circle of bright light around me to protect me. One good thing that happened to me, though, was in 2008. I was driving home from work, office job, in February, after working 12 hours, and it was starting to snow when I blew a tire going about 80, spun 360, almost, and shot right through the opening of two of the posts that were supposed to stop cars from going over the, over the bank. A brook, stream, creek. Anyway, I landed on the right nose of the car, straight up and down. Thank God I did not flip over. So I got the door open, got out of the car, looked straight up and down the side of the bank, and I said to myself, how the hell am I going to get up there? Next thing I remember was I had a twirling feeling, and my toes hit the gravel road that came off the, mount, the main road. Hey, what are you doing? Hmm? Goofy dog. Sorry, guys. This is, there's wires here. I want to make sure she's not chewing on. Now, Steve, I had a full length, down to my ankles, wool dress coat, and there was no way that I crawled straight up that bank, because if I did, my dress coat would have been a mess. And it was not. What are you doing? Hold on a second. Now, Steve, I had on a full length, down to my ankles, wool dress coat, and there was no way that I crawled straight up that bank. Because if I did, my dress coat would have been a mess, and it was not. And my winter dress boots had not a mark on them. So I know that I did not walk, crawl, or whatever up that bank. Car accident, bad, but coat and boots, good. Hey, <laughs> background sound, buddy. Good luck to you. And this is just from a 60-year-old great-grandmother, and yes, I said, great. Have them young. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. Appreciate that email. That's a strange experience. And I guarantee you, somebody out there listening to this channel has had something similar go down. All right, what do you need? You need to play, don't you? Well, we can't play yet. That'd be something else to have that kind of experience and then explain it to somebody, right? And I have to share that. But what, 9 out of 10 people are going to be saying now, so you're drinking and driving? Or whatever, right? All right, hold on a minute. You can't chew on that, all right? All right. All right.
get another one shared here. Man, it's foggy out there. Heavy fog today. You know what I might take? So I might take the girls to the hatchery today. Maybe it's turkey day here too. Sarah's throwing one of her turkeys in the oven. But I think what I might do today is maybe take them up to the hatchery. There's a lot that goes on at the hatchery and I've never met anybody there. I did run into a man that worked there or volunteered his time there and he had a couple stories to share. And I'm thinking maybe, because uh, this is the time of year, right? There's a lot of activity at the hatcheries. I'm not looking for any experience, but I wouldn't mind going to the hatchery, seeing what it looks like there. Maybe I could even beta tape a bit of it for you guys, and hopefully if there's a tech there, I'll talk to them and see what they know. I think I might do that today. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to share this one more, and then get on with this. Second attempt. High strangeness in West Georgia. Old story and new trail cam pick. Alright. Excuse me. Hi Steve, newer follower here. I've been following you for about six months now. I suggest you channel all the hunters in my life. I have a degree in anthropology. And my focus was physical anthropology. That's people and animals. I've studied howlers in Nicaragua with a focus on renting and their village and how they as a group raise the babies. There's a bunch of typos here. All parenting I think is what that word is supposed to be instead of a one word allo parenting. We are Cherokee and German my mom's side, Cherokee and Irish my dad's side. Our dad brought us up to powwow and learning the indigenous ways of hunting and doing things in our daily lives. And this brother and this brother and I have always followed more of the Cherokee views on the Creator and spirituality than we ever did Christianity. We believe parts of both. I've always been a Erith child. As soon as I was sitting up on my own, I was on a horse. I had the best paint pony mare that was more of a best friend than any human I've ever had. I can relate. My mom used to let me take her in my room and play Barbies when I was little. Anyway, enough about that. I myself have never seen a Sabe, but I have seen lots of blue slash white and orangish orbs. I'm also an empath and have had many mind speak situations. Put off, put off body, say so you probably meant out of body experiences as well as seeing shadow people and lots of other spiritual experiences. Steve, I'm a knower, no matter what I have or have not seen. Everyone talks about the legend of Boggy Creek opening their eyes, but mine was as a small child watching Harry and the Hendersons. No one ever talks about that old Chevy Chase, I think, movie. Ha <laughs> ha. My father and one of three brothers all... My father and one of three brothers all know. I'm writing you today to tell you my full, tell you my full blood brother's experience. Just so you know, we believe Sabe are our brothers and sisters, and we all mind speak when we feel we're being watched and tell them our land is sanctuary. We tell them they are welcome here, that this land is a place of love and light, and they're welcome here, with the understanding there is no malice here. We'll protect as much as any measly human can, and we expect the protection of every being using our sanctuary for every being visiting. My dad and I live in the city of Douglasville, Georgia, about two miles behind the mall. Here's where I've seen orbs, had mine speak, and seen shadow people. My brother, on the other hand, lives on the outskirts of town, on one of the, lost dirt, on one of the last dirt roads in Douglas County. His community is called Winston, but is still Douglas County. My dad and I live on about two acres, that is dad's, but beside about three more acres of woods. We have about 200 chickens, 32 breeds, and a few show rabbits for breeding. My brother Daryl is on 23 acres of land, which he's filed as a wildlife refuge with the state. So the land he now owns backs up to his best friend's dad's land which the two have hunted on since high school. We're, we're in our 40s now. 
He told me the story I'm about to post in a while back. And then two days ago, he sent me the pic that I've attached from one of his trail cams beside the apple trees. There are two deer in the picture, and they're both looking at the same exact thing. An orb is perfectly caught, shot too. Okay, no more BS, let's get to the story. Daryl says, quote, direct in the horse's mouth, end quote. I got over to the house about an hour and a half, one and a half hours before daylight. I called Ryan, his BFF at the time, but as usual, he didn't answer. I knocked on his window, no answer. I never hunted over there before, so I decided to just walk back into the woods and hunt without him. It was dark, but the woods were open. It's a hardwood holler with very little underground. What is there is very sparse. The moon was out, so I never even turned on a flashlight. I walked down the hill towards the creek. I found a couple of oak trees that were about five feet apart. I decided I was just going to sit there until it got light enough to see. There was a couple of limbs that had fallen from a storm. Limbs that had fallen from a storm a week or so before. I pulled them up in front of me to make a little blind. I got sat down. I turned my red light on so I could see to get my drink out of my backpack. I turned my light off, took a drink, sat down beside me. I had been as quiet as possible, aside from dragging those limbs in front of me. After about five minutes, there was no sound, no crickets, nothing. It was like I had put on, put on earmuffs. I didn't think much of it at the time, since I had kind of started dozing off. An owl hooted the distance, which made me open my eyes. And then I heard a sound I had never heard before, or since. It's hard to describe. It was a guttural kind of half growl, half breath, but way longer than a dog's howl. I know the sounds that every critter makes in these woods. We grew up in the woods. From a hog squeal to a coon squall, to foxes' barks and yips, to a deer's grunts and snorts, to a coyote's sounds. This, there was, this was like nothing I'd ever heard before. It was about a good nine to 10 second long hoof. It made my hair stand up all over my body. It made my skin crawl. My heart was thumping so hard I could hear it in my ears. I had the strongest uneasy feeling that I've ever felt. Now you know I ain't afraid of much of anything, and I fear no man. But I pulled my rifle up close to me, eased the safety off, and strained my eyes to see anything. Anything at all. I was begging to see something, so I'd know what was out here with me. I needed to know what made that noise. I wasn't much of a Christian back then, but I was sure talking to God, praying that whatever it was, don't let it get me. For what seemed like forever, it finally started getting daylight enough to see. The odd thing was, there weren't any woods noises. No birds chirping, no squirrels chattering, nothing. It was dead quiet. It was literally broad daylight before I heard the first bird noise. Around 10.30 or 11, a big tall spike walked into view. I dropped him in his tracks. I waited another 30 minutes and got up and walked over to the deer and said, my thank yous and dragged him to my stuff. I packed up, threw my bag and chair over my shoulders, and dragged him back to the house. I told Ryan what had happened, and he laughed at me like I was crazy. I hunted there a couple more times after that, and his parents sold the place. I couldn't hunt there anymore, but I never had that happen, I never had that happen again over here. Never heard that sound again. Never had that uneasy feeling, never had a silent morning, nothing like that. By far the strangest time I've ever spent in the woods in my entire life. Well, sorry, we all here want to thank you for doing what you do. It is so, so important that we get the full story from each and every person willing to share. And you give the safe place to make it happen. It means more than you'll ever comprehend, I'm sure. We send our love and respect to you and the family, and I send love to your animals too, haha. -ha from down here in Georgia, and wish you happiness and health and all the good things in life. I also send you and yours protection every chance I get. You all are in my prayers. Thanks again for being a good and decent human, and for caring about the people, blessed be. P.S. Just say thank you for the knife returned and forget about it, lol. <laughs> Love and light. Did you say to use your name? All right, I'll, I'll, 
I'm not sure I, if he did say to use it or not. I'll leave it up. I appreciate your kind words. I appreciate your kind words and all those good thoughts come right back at you and everybody here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, who knows, right? If that's an orb, it almost looks like a, to me, it looks like a moth caught in the, in the IR flash of the, of the photo. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I hope so, but it's just too much for me to, I gotta go into Dropbox, save this to Dropbox, open this, take from Dropbox, put it on this, put it in the editing program. So it's a little easier for me to just go like that. But that is the object caught in the trail camera. Allegedly an orb, but I've got a funny feeling it might be a moth, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Either way, there you go. Shared and appreciated. Appreciate it big time. Now, I'm going to have to get moving here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull this off. I, didn't, I couldn't pull off doing it yesterday. I'll try. What else? Hopefully I can find the photograph that a person saw. I didn't see the I didn't see the image next to me in those trees looking at me when I was there. Somebody noticed it, circled it in red, and sent the photograph to me here. Now I don't know if that's saved on my other computer. I don't know. I haven't seen a photograph for a long time. But the photo I'm talking about is a screenshot of me in a video where the being looks exactly like what the first email sent in was with that alleged face behind that stump. I think it'd be interesting to compare those images because where he took that photo was I shot where that happened to me. Random, right? So there you go. Share my story at howtohunt.com. Word for word. You want to share it? It's shared word for word. You don't want your names mentioned? It doesn't get mentioned. But this is a safe place to do it. Get it off your chest and, uh, Share what you know with the people, all right? You know now that you're not crazy. You didn't ask for whatever it was you experienced, okay? This is the place where we all talk openly and freely in a safe place. Excuse me. Here I go. I'll be back again shortly.